Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India students welcome to swayam prabha the course title is principles of marketing and the lecture title is pricing decisions part 1 this is module 9 lecture 2 i am dr shoma sen gupta associate professor commerce kamla nehru college university of delhi in this lecture we will discuss the pricing methods pricing methods now you know when you apply a pricing method you arrive at a specific price you have certain goals in mind and you want to achieve it through pricing marketing managers decides the appropriate method on the basis of the study and analysis of internal and external aspects as well as as suitability of the method the different pricing methods are cost oriented pricing now cost establish the base for the possible price range you know about that and the cost methods are markup pricing which is also known as cost plus pricing and target return pricing then there are certain market pricing methods and this here competition most of the time establishes the price and they may be perceived value pricing value based pricing going rate pricing and seal bid pricing so we will discuss all these methods in detail in the next few slides cost plus pricing or markup pricing now this is the elementary method and is considered as the best approach to pricing it is based on sellers per unit cost of the product plus a margin of the profit so the seller or the manufacturer first determines how much cost per unit cost he has incurred in manufacturing or is going to incur in manufacturing a particular product and what margin he is expecting so he will add something that is the margin and that will determine the price of the product items taken into account while determining the sales price are of course different types of cost and the margin so cost of producing or acquiring the goods cost of operating or selling expenses interest depreciation expected profit margin or markup expected profit margin or markup also depends on certain things like it is usually decided as a percentage of the selling price and this varies from goods to goods so certain in certain expensive very expensive premium products you can have a markup of around 30 to 40% over the cost uh, ordinary consumer goods will have a markup of around 10 to 15% so let us discuss the formula and an example of calculating the markup price so first of all the formula is unit cost is equal to variable cost plus fixed cost by unit sales so suppose a product is being manufactured and its variable cost that is the per unit cost is 800 rupees while the fixed cost uh, is uh, 20 lakh rupees and unit sales expected is 10000 units so it will be rupees 800 plus rupees 200 which will come out as rupees 1000 uh, uh, per unit that is the unit cost now you have to think about the margin you want suppose the desired return on sales is 20% so your formula is markup price is equal to unit cost divided by 1 minus desired return on sales here we have said that desired return on sales is 20% so 20 by 100 is 0.2 so your markup price is unit cost that is 1000 rupees divided by 
1 minus 0 to 0 0.2 which comes out to be rupees 1250 per unit. So you can see the 1000 rupees is the unit cost and the markup is 250. So the final markup price is 1250 per unit. Suitability of this method in retail and wholesale trade, they use this kind of method. Professionals like doctors and lawyers also use it. And also this is used in construction companies while they are sending their tenders also. Uh, they use this type of marker pricing. Advantages of cost plus pricing or marker pricing. Now, first thing is you can recover the cost as rapidly as possible. It is simple and easy to use and estimates cost uh, in an easier way, uh, manner uh, than estimating demand. If all firms use this method, their prices tend to be similar and hence minimizes price competition. This is fair to both buyer and seller. Buyer need not pay more when the demand become acute and the seller earns a reasonable return on investment. The drawbacks of this method is it does not take into account the current demand elasticity while setting the selling price. So it is not thinking about what prices, whatever prices you are uh, setting. Will it affect the demand of the product? So price elasticity is not considered. Uh, hence, may not, this may not achieve the maximum profits. It is not logical as it ignores competition and perceived value of the product. This method can be used, used only if necessary data about various costs and expected sales are available. The second pricing method, cost-based price method is target return pricing or target pricing. Now, this is again a commonly used cost oriented method of pricing. Return on investment is taken as the base for price determination. The firm determines that level of price at which it can yield the target return on investment and then establishes the price of the product with a profit that would give a predetermined target rate of return on its total cost at predetermined production levels and sales volume. These attempts are made to recover the cost of investment. The working is determine the fixed and variable cost at various levels of the production and determine the break-even volume. Then decide the target profit depending upon the rate of return. The formula is target return price is equal to unit cost plus desired return into invested capital divided by unit sales. So suppose your unit cost from the previous example is 1000 rupees only. Your desired return was 20%, so it is 0 0.2. Uh, invested capital here uh, is uh, say, mm, uh, it is uh, 100 uh, lakhs mm -hmm. and 10,000 is the unit sales. So it is 1000 plus 200 is equal to 1200 will be your price. Suitability and use of target pricing. Government companies, public utilities with a huge capital investment, they use this method. Also for engineering products and high value consumer durable products, defense equipments and machinery, target return pricing is used. Merit of this method is that firm obtains a fair return on investment. The drawback is it suffers from basic flaws as it is based on a predetermined sales volume, but price is a factor that influences sales volume. It does not take into consideration the importance of the demand function. So what needs to be done? Manufacturer must consider different prices and their probable impact on sales, volume and profits. The third method is perceived value pricing method. Now it is a market oriented approach uh, and uh, for setting the price. Company takes consumer's perception or, of value as a key to set the price and not its own cost and objectives. Company tries to measure the views of the buyers regarding price of the product. Manager explains the consumer uh, about total offers, that is the non-price variables, like the core product, the key benefits and features, durability, reliability, product-related aspects like brand image, reputation, novelty, etc. 
product related services like after sales services free installation free home delivery warranty guarantee etc because these are the benefits which the customer if they perceive that they are getting they will get from the product then accordingly you can price it higher ask them to estimate the price for the product or for the total benefits offered so this is one method of finding out from a panel of customers about what they expect and if they are provided this type of benefits what should be the uh, price of the product the key is to measure accurately the marketer's perception of the offer value the seller will with inflated views of his offers will overprice the product while with underestimated uh, views views will charge less than what it should be so it may perceive value may not justify the price or cost uh, so it has a different kind of arrangement market research is needed to estimate market perception of the price so it is very important that you first of all find how the customers perceive the product so that is perceived value what value they they think that they will get from the product if they buy this product at a particular price merits of perceived value pricing method perceived value method matches with consumer orientation and product positioning perceived value can be taken as a base with little adjustments in cost objectives and planned quality price image uh, the most suitable price can be set it considers indirectly competitors offers it is more realistic than any other method the demerits of perceived value pricing method are Mm, uh, it is particularly difficult to measure perception of the market because perception and all these are psychological phenomena and th that is very difficult to determine unless relatively a large sample of consumers is contracted views may be misleading so if it is on the basis of some kind of a survey or panel result then it may be it may give you a misleading result a lot depends on the person who estimates buyers perception of price possibility of bias cannot be uh, bias cannot be ignored the method is based on the trust if their response is not normal it is a wasteful expenditure or excess exercise all the limitations of marketing research are equally applicable to this method so it depends upon the sample size and all so that limitation is uh, there difficult and complex to understand and apply as i said that it is a psychological phenomena so it is difficult to understand another pricing method is value based pricing it is different from perceived value pricing the here the firm charges a less price for a high quality product to offer high value to the consumers so you are charging less for more so as to uh, improve the value which the customers will get you know that the customers is constantly uh, doing some kind of calculations that what they are paying and what they are getting in return that determines the value to them for their money so if they are getting more by paying less then naturally the value will increase it uses the value customers gain from the product or service as the basis for the cost ignoring the cost of production this represents a good bargain for the consumers so they will be happy or delighted and that's why they will buy the product so this is uh, what the management thinks and that's why they go for value based pricing for example procter and gamble charged low price for pampers diapers now pampers diapers are high high quality diapers and if they the customers are getting it for a uh, low price then naturally the they are getting value for their money the strategy is uh, uh, as given by the kotler he says that reengineering the company's operations to truly become the low cost producer without sacrificing quality so this strategy can be used so you manufacture at the lowest cost and uh, charge less but quality should be maintained lower the prices significantly in order to attract a large number of value con conscious customers now value based pricing strategy works well when your product or service is innovative and can't be easily swapped with a uh, with an alternative when your product or service is significantly better than alternatives uh, that can accomplish the same function uh, 
The merit of value-based pricing is that a firm that administer value pricing effectively is likely to have its sales and profits growing at a faster rate than its competitors. Of course, every customer would want to go for high value products. Drawbacks are making customers understand that they are getting more for less is a difficult task because people associate good quality with high price. So to break that is very difficult and for that you need appropriate kind of promotion. The strategy may backfire if low price indicates a low quality to the customers. So you have to be very careful about how you are positioning your product in the market through value based pricing. The next um, pricing strategy is a going rate pricing method. Uh, now competitive parity method or competition oriented pricing method can be used. That is whatever the competitors are charging, uh, the company may charge the same or more or less than the major competitors. The notion is follow the leader or leader is right. So that can be possible. The method is normally followed by small firms. Uh, they are called the followers uh, in the going rate pricing method and the company gives less attention to its own cost objectives or product demand. But pricing decision is largely based on competitors prices. One most, uh, must note that the company doesn't select a price which is far below or much higher than the real. So you have to think about your other factors also. How a competitor's pricing is taken as a base and final price may be set slightly high or low depending upon the objectives, qualities of the product and the services offered. Merits of going rate pricing rate pricing method. It is only way to set the price when costs are difficult to measure and competitors response is uncertain. It considers competitors pricing policy as the base. In contemporary marketing practices, it is more relevant method. Going rate pricing brings uniform pricing in the industry. It ensures fair return to the sellers and the harmony in the industry. Uh, it may protect consumers from cheating and misguiding. They can buy the similar product at a more or less same price. Now the demerits of this method methods are uh, this is not an ideal method for pricing because it is one sided. That is one, only competition factor is considered and not the cost or the objective of the firm is considered. Companies objectives, cost, qualities, services and consumers perception of value um, is uh, ignored in this kind of method. It is senseless to follow blindly the leaders or strong competitors as every firm has its special problem, opportunities, situations and capabilities. Temporary pricing of competitors may lead to erroneous or wrong decisions. So this is all about going rate pricing method. The last method which we are going to discuss in this lecture is the sealed bid pricing method. Now it is a comp competitive pricing method and you must have heard about bidding and tender pricing. So it is also called as tender pricing. The price is selected on the basis of, a of sealed bids and bids are nothing but the quotation or estimated price for the job. So different competitors, they will bid for a contract and they will send their quotation or estimates. The, uh, then the uh, uh, the, the company which is giving the contract which will which is planning to give the contract they will open the bid and the lowest bidder with the good good quality of uh, and assurance will be given the contract so sealed bids or sealed envelopes uh, containing a bid are invited for a competitive work uh, now tender notice is published in newspaper or circulars the offer or proposal for work contains type of work to be done time to complete the work, quality of work and other similar conditions. In response to the pro proposals of the jobs or work, interested parties have to fill the se sealed bids or tender stating price and conditions of work. On the due date, either publicly or otherwise, the sealed bids are opened and the bid with lower price and more favorable conditions is selected for the job. Rate of selected bid is the price of the job. 
Now, how the bids are set? The firm sets its price on expectation of how competitors will price the product. It is not only you are calculating your own cost, and but you want to uh, win the contract, and for that you are estimating what the competitors might be setting their price on. The firm wants to win the contract requires submitting the lower price than the competitors. Costs and profits are not totally ignored. Firms cannot set price below the cost because otherwise it will be worthless. Seal bid pricing is followed in construction or contract business. Companies and organizations, uh, charitable trusts, governments, time and again for big contracts, they go for sealed bid pricing methods. The merit is the criteria for setting price is expected profit, which makes sense for a firm that makes uh, many bids. So if you are making many bids, then you can uh, uh, decide about the expected profits as it will achieve maximum profits in the long run. Demerits are occasional bidder may suffer for, and the expected profit criterion may not be advantageous for the firm. To summarize this lecture, we can state that different pricing methods are either cost oriented or market oriented. The cost oriented methods co uh, in case of cost oriented methods, cost establish the base for the possible price range. Markup pricing and cost plus pricing is based on sellers per unit cost of the product plus a margin of profit. Another cost oriented pricing method is the target return pricing. Return on investment is taken as a base for price determination here. In market pricing, competition establishes the price. Perceived value pricing is there whereby company takes consumer's perception of value as a key to set the price. Value-based pricing, firm charges a less price for a high quality product to offer high value to the consumers. Going rate pricing, company may charge the same more or less than the major competitors. Sealed bid pricing, price is selected on the basis of sealed bids or quotations for the job. Thank you very much students. So this was pricing decision part 1, module 9, lecture 2.